I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. At a press briefing on Wednesday, Governor Ron DeSantis slammed outgoing DHS Governance Board Chief Nina Jankowitz. Defending himself from accusations of misinformation, the Florida governor called Jankowitz, quote, off her rocker. He added, quote, having the government tell you what's true and not is antithetical to the values that this country was founded on, particularly a regime that is so divorced from reality. His comments came before the pause of the DHS board and the resignation of Jankowitz. Let's listen in to his harsh words. So we, we but bottom line is, is that we, we are fighting back. We're doing what we need to do. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what ends up happening. But it's frustrating to see so many bad policies uh, being posed on the American people. And one of the things that we're really concerned about is Biden has now created a disinformation bureau in the Department of Homeland Security. And they have this this Nina Jankowitz, who is really off her rocker, that they put in charge of this. And, you know, she has been a huge supporter of conspiracy theories like Russia collusion and all these other things. But they're making her the arbiter of what's true and what is, quote, disinformation or misinformation. And the way they're doing it is, you know, whatever the regime wants, they're going to say is the truth. And then if you dissent from that, they're going to say it's misinformation. But if you think about it, over the last two years with things like COVID, all the things that I was saying early on and others, they would say is misinformation. And then six to 12 months later, people would admit it's true. Like, for example, if you get COVID and recover, you have protection through, through natural immunity. The CDC denied natural immunity. They said it was misinformation for like a year and a half. Now they kind of begrudgingly admit it, but they still don't admit like they would. Uh, when we said that the kids needed to be back in school uh, very early on in, the, in 2020, uh, people were saying that that was somehow misinformation and that wasn't following science, even though we were following the data and the evidence. Now, you look at what's happened, a lot of these places that lock the kids out of school, you're seeing widening of the achievement gap you're actually seeing public school enrollment hemorrhage in a lot of these places because the parents couldn't get the kids in school. So they're homeschooling. They're doing that. They're moving to Florida. They're doing all these other things. And, you know, we're supportive of homeschool and all that. But in Florida, our enrollment in our school system has actually increased compared to over the last two years because we've been open. And we said the kids don't have to wear masks for eight hours a day. Uh, we're working to make sure that they're... We're working to make sure that the purpose of the school system is to educate our kids, not to indoctrinate our kids. And that's what parents want to see. So we are doing more you know, than anybody. I mean, on education across the board, but just that, uh, making sure we didn't see achievement gaps widen, and then being a, a place where the enrollment is actually one of the few states in the country where it's increasing, that's tied to the funding. Uh, when, when, you, when you have less kids in school, then, then the school districts get less money. So we've never had more funding for schools in the history of the state of Florida than we do uh, right now. Um, and we've done things that uh, really they haven't done in a long time, uh, like promote vocational education, like make sure we don't have ideology in the classroom, like, like critical race theory and all these other things. And that's really what leadership's all about. We got to get out there and get it done. And we had the issue where uh, we wanted parents to be able to send their kids to these young grades without having things like uh, woke gender ideology in the curriculum. And that was something that was important to a lot of parents. You know, some of the media didn't like it, and there were some companies that didn't like it. Uh, but, you know, at the end... <laughs> but, you know, at the end of the day, uh, we govern this state on the basis of what's in the best interest of the people of this state, not what some California-based corporation thinks they want to see. And that's just the way it's going to be. So you saw all that, and they, so they would say all this stuff with the schools and natural immunity and say, even saying that COVID... Uh, was uh, less risky for young people than old people, they said that was misinformation at one time. They said an eight-year-old kid and an 80-year-old, it's still, everyone's still at risk, and that was wrong, and, and we were right on that. And so having the government tell you what's true and not is antithetical to the values that this country was founded on, 
particularly a regime that is so divorced from reality like, like this one is. But what they're going to do is they are going to take people that they want to marginalize and silence, and they are going to categorize what you're saying as disinformation or misinformation. Now, they're not going to have the federal government necessarily directly crack down on that, but what they are going to do is they are going to give that information to the social media companies, and they're going to expect Google and Facebook and Twitter, if Musk doesn't end up getting it, they're going to end up uh, relying on them to enforce what they say is proper information and what they say is disinformation. But you know what? If you have good ideas and you have good policies, you don't need to worry about people uh, criticizing you. The only way, reason they worry about it is because they don't want people to know the truth. Uh, and so trying to stifle dissent and they're trying to muzzle people who are speaking out because they see the nonsense that's going on around them. I mean, just think about what the NCAA did with the women's swim championship. You know, you have a swimmer that swims on the men's team for three years and then all of a sudden says they're going to identify as a woman swimmer and swim against the women. And then they give that the national championship over these women who've been, who've been training for a long time. And the second place was actually from Florida, who had won a silver medal in the Olympics. So she got robbed of a national championship because the NCAA is really trying to make us complicit in something that's false. And so that's what you're going to get, and they will absolutely do whatever they can with social media uh, to try to stifle dissent. So, you know, we are absolutely going to be on guard to fight back against that. I do think that if Musk gets Twitter, the reason they don't want him to get it is because he's going to open it up. And they basically just admitted on camera there was a, a hidden video where one of the Twitter people was saying, like, yeah, we don't believe in free speech. All we want to do is marginalize people who have conservative views. And so that's pretty much what it's become. So with Musk, he's going to open it up, and then their ideas are going to have to withstand scrutiny. And they don't want to have to put their ideas to scrutiny. Because if you're telling me things like a man can get pregnant, that's not true, OK? And we know that's not true. And we're going to be able to say that's not true. And they don't want that. They want you to be muzzled. So disinformation bureau. Um, is I mean, I think it probably is unconstitutional anyways, but clearly if they're subcontracting out these social media companies to do their dirty work, uh, that's violating the Constitution indirectly, and they're just as liable for that. So, so we'll be on guard, and we'll make sure that we're standing up uh, for what's right.